Welcome to Tuska 2017. Now we have a really special guest, Suicidal Tendencies, all the way from California. As many of you know, the band is really, really old, almost in the grandpa age. Just kidding, but 30 years and something is really something not to miss. And here we have the Mr. Fucking Main Man, Mike Moore. He is the really original psycho, as all you know. So, Mr. Mike Moore, welcome and uh, welcome to Finland and great to have you here again in Tuska. You have been here before, but how many times in total you've been in Finland? Can you remember? Wow. Six, maybe six times, if I guessed. I don't really count. You don't care or you just... I don't, I don't count. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Probably so, six, maybe. I don't know. So how's touring life uh, been if you for last few years? I mean, you're getting older and the uh, pace of uh, how you release your albums, it's not exactly what it used to be in the earlier years. What's going on in the ST camp? Um, actually, the last few years we've been very busy, a little too busy. And um, so um, before the record came out, we pretty much ran we're, uh, for about a year, well, Since we put out 13 in 2013, we've been pretty going pretty straight and stuff. So as I say, you know, you're you've been gone too much when you get up to go to the store and your son, youngest son grabs your leg and where are you going, Dada? Getting milk. You're not getting on an airplane. No, no. So yeah, it's been pretty busy. So family life, life always kind of has its own. Uh, how to put it? It has its own uh, hindrance on the on the tour life and uh, making albums. But how it's been, how it for, works for you? I won't say hindrance. Um, if I didn't have my family, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. So it works. It works both ways and stuff. I, I've, I've said for years is when they say that's it, and then that's when it's that's it and stuff. But um, uh, we just played did like three weeks in France in April, and um, my oldest son was 13. It's the first time that he flew out during his spring break and got to go to a bunch of shows. And um, uh, we did a couple festivals before there. They came to us to Japan and stuff. So they they know what they know what I do. They know why I do it. They know the people that I'm around, and all of that. So um, that's a big difference, I think. And they see the difference between uh, maybe the way we do things and some other bands do too. So. Um, Uh, their support's obviously very important, and that's a, a big part of what we what we're doing. I mean, for us, it's always been uh, family is something that's very important. Where we grew up, family is very important. And uh, as my dad said in life, you know, most people, you know, you get three families: the one you're born into. That's it. You have no choice. You got to make it work. If you don't like something, you learn. You get 12, 13. You start, you know, hanging out. You pick friends. But it's usually just because they live in the same area. You realize later that maybe some of the people that you hang out with are just not good people and just geographic. And then when you get other places, you realize the, the differences. But like with our crew, everybody's from different countries. The first thing is you realize different languages, different cultures. But when you get to know them, you're like good people and stuff. So and, you know, when it goes to third family, when you pick a family and then you, you learn from what you don't like, you try not to repeat that, try to do the things that you do like. And we've been very fortunate that we've uh touring around the world everywhere we go there's a, a lot of people that are very in the suicidal that that have a regardless of what their original culture language or whatever is from is they have a good understanding of what we're doing and what we're trying to do and so that makes things much easier yeah you had your own uh, family values back in the days and i mean the album sense and stuff and you've always talked or sang about values regarding family and family matters But how are your own kids? I'm just talking you as a person, but the whole band and previous members, how are your own kids like uh, into this kind of music and the, the lifestyle that the band has brought to you? Um, well, I learned from my other friends when they had kids and they were telling me how all their kids were geniuses and this and that. I try not to talk about my kids. But um, um, I think for... Uh, Uh, the best thing I can say is um, I realized a long time ago um, my son would if we were somewhere where we we're at someone came up and started talking and he'd come up to me he goes he goes dada he goes is that your friend or they just know the band 
And um, if I said, because he couldn't tell the way we talk, because people come, hey, Mike, what's up? You know, and um, I say, oh, that's a friend. If I said that, if they had a kid, he would talk to their kid. If they didn't, he would join in the conversation. I said, oh, I, I don't really know them. You know, they just know the band. He would leave. And so I realized that he took a, quite a, um, uh, a value in, 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 in my, my opinions and stuff. And, and uh, as we would call it, we say vouching. So I think that um, they observe they understand um my dad played uh jumping on a tangent he played f american football you know in college he didn't want us to do that he people say you're gonna your kid's gonna play football he goes they'll do what they want to do you know my brother my dad never skated my brother was a pro skateboarder and was in the skateboard hall of fame and stuff we all had our own journey and that's the thing with my kids i want them to have their own journey i hope they don't do music i don't want them to uh music is something that's important and um and to a certain degree but i see how a lot of people misuse it too and um so but i want them to find something that they that they they feel in their heart that they you know um have their own journey and and i'm excited to see what that is that's not for me to try to put them through it you know i'm not one of those people that you know people have the military families or the doctor families or you're going to do this and that i don't know what they're going to do and i just hope they get exposed to a lot of great things and they find something that they love uh, do they share your vision of uh, good music so to speak or do you have to uh, like have a family talk who is gonna put something on spotify or whatever <laughs> no they you know they'll uh, when they're in the car you go my wife they're just listening to the radio and stuff they um take an interest they like going to the studio we're just in there they like going there and then they'll they'll ask about songs and it's kind of cute when uh you know well now there's six seven 13 but when they're younger and they're asking about songs and stuff and put it on there and there's some funny videos and and uh they get in arguments on music it'll be on there and it's like daddy's that your that's not that ass band and they can they can tell the difference and stuff so um i i appreciate that they have a good understanding my son has drums which i'm not happy about but he uh he actually has rhythm so we're we got plenty of time to get him away from that but um Uh, they, they they enjoy music the way that I enjoyed music and there's a lot of music they don't enjoy just like there's a lot that I didn't so um, you know they, they'll do the little thing I'll do before they'll play have a, a football game or, so, or soccer game you know they play soccer and they'll like put on a song before they <laughs> go to, to the game it's Wednesday game day and they'll put on a song you know and they'll get all in so it's kind of cute on their own they do that so that's that's their choice whatever whatever they like So you mentioned three families, but you kind of had your, or have, still have, four family because you made a very well known already back in the 80s, ST, Bledger, Allegiance, and stuff like that. Do you feel like you have created something that is um, out of boundaries regarding a normal band or typical band because you have such a strong ST culture? I mean, like people wearing not just clothes, but you know, they have the bandana stuff and all that. Was that a intentional or just a kind of success that got of get out of uh, uh, by accident or how it was done? Well, I, I think that there's um, very few bands that I and people that uh, that I ever really go like if I met I'd be like freaked out or something. Not freaked out that just you know that really kind of. Um, made a, a massive impression upon me so much that I would not be able to put that into words. And um, so it's it's cool and stuff where you'll you'll see people now, literally generations, people with their kids. And uh, the one case I always talk about, there is four generations, great grandfather, grandfather, mom and her kids and uh, four generation family. But you'll be there with someone. And just the other day we we're in Spain and And the guy was with his, his daughter was 16 and she was the show and he, she goes, I told me better not cry <laughs> if he meets you. And so it's kind of funny. He's sitting there and he's holding her and he's, you know, hug and she's like that stuff. So it's it's cool when um, people uh, uh, understand what you're doing. And, you know, there's the other side. There's some people like, dude, fucking rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's other people that, you know, you can actually, they, 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 they feel it and um, it's a part and and i think that's the difference with suicidal that a lot of people don't get some people don't you know get it and i go well you're, you're not supposed to get it <laughs> you know that's not a problem i think a lot of people like um they like being in a crowd 
they like looking around and people like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not having any relationship, you know, and being drunk and just, you know, and when I was young and uh, people go to, you know, the concerts and 13, 14, 15, and they're like, dude, I was so fucked up. I don't remember anything. It was great. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense to me and stuff. And so, um, uh, I think um, experiences, memories, and things um, are, are are important. You know that are constantly uh, evolving, and uh, so we like to have music be a little bit different. We know, like with being in Europe in the summertime with festivals, it's a great opportunity because um, you'll play places like you know we just did Download uh, in Paris and at Hellfest, and we can do three weeks in France. And so there's a whole people that that never seen us, and then they're there to see other bands, and then they see this fucking sea of suicidal people there, and they're like, they it makes them uncomfortable because people are in the band so much. They're like, well, and and then you see the other side where you see the younger people, or they've seen the the hats or the shirts or stuff like that, and they wouldn't go to the show because they're not really familiar, so they assume they must not like it. But you're at a show, and they go there, and they'll go, dude. I've seen the hats, shirts. I had no idea what you guys were about. And so um, it's a it's a great opportunity for them to see. And then the other side, you know, at the beginning you said a, a old band. Um, I think that people are able to, well, when they see us, they uh, uh, are surprised. Because I think a lot of people, they go through the motions. We live in a world of very people are very patterned and, and habit and they get caught into it and a lot of times if you can go back to when they were younger they say i'll never end up like that and they become that person and uh with suicidal we've been doing it a long time but we try to be very unpatternistic you know my dad always said sweat don't lie and whatever you do if you're working hard um it comes across be you know work hard be smart and you know put your heart into what you're doing and stuff and so i think that's where people realize that you know you see everybody's seen bands where sometimes you think they're going through the motions or they're not literally even going through the motions they're there and um they're there maybe for the wrong reasons and um so you know going back to tie it all in we all i you know i love my family miss my family can't wait to get back to see them and um but you know we're here tonight that that absence also makes you want to put more into the music so people know that you really care about what you're doing so you're one of the most verbal guys in music and this is going to be the last question i get just notified uh what is your fuel what is your gasoline you've been doing like 35 years or something and you have lots of really emotional stuff hatred sadness um joy all kind of stuff during your albums and you have gone from genre to genre what is the stuff that still keeps you going after all these years i i think that um to me now i put it because in a couple ways i have kids and stuff so i sit there i think the 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 future is it could be very good and uh you know you turn on the news and sometimes i don't even want to see the news when we're gone because of all the shit that's happening but um i see what my kids can do i see what their friends can do i see the potential they have that that i never had you know um uh just the with with all the technology and all the possibilities of things that they can do and um so I, i'm hopeful for that and uh i think for us um i think one of the things that people have is too much doubt i think there's a lot of um uh people get into politics but i'll get into psychology i think there's a lot of really terrible things that people are believing um and accepting which i totally don't this whole um, triggered thing is a bunch of fucking shit. They're uh, training people to be fucking basically uh, weak as. And uh, my, I was brought up a different way and I'm thankful I was brought up a different way. My dad said, you can embrace excuses or you can fucking get up and do some hard work. And I think we're living in a society where we embrace excuses. Everything's hard and I'm like, fucking what are you talking about? It's hard. The heart, my dad always said the hardest thing to do is, is fucking do nothing. You know, you sit there and you watch your whole life go by 
and it was always an analogy he pulled me he goes you know what time goes whether you do or not and when you're what's hard is when you're whatever age you're going to determine is a whole 65 75 85 you're sitting in a rocking chair and you go i can't go back if i could go back you'll see everything clearly i would do this 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 and that and um so i i think for us we try to be rather than a nostalgic band we try to be a kick in the ass band you know where tell people you know what don't be a fucking bitch you know that doesn't mean about you know it's as my dad said you know and in in, when you're young you get somewhere with your fist you know in the neighborhood but in the world you get somewhere with your mind and don't be a bitch don't be a coward you know and you get it's a hard journey to to like yourself you know and believe in yourself you know people i love myself I just, you're like no you don't those are words you know and actions is a very difficult thing you know and um i've had some good fights with myself but they're necessary you know not because i don't love myself because um and you know we need to and i think that that's a situation too many people they define friendship as the person oh it's okay it's okay i was always brought up what the fuck do you think was gonna happen <laughs> you fucking st- what do you, you want me you of course well, seriously if someone else did that you'd go you're a fucking idiot and you're doing it i'm supposed to give you sympathy oh you know so yeah people don't like me because i i i try to be as honest i try to give the advice that my dad gave to me without the profanity of course and and uh the way i do it with my kids without the profanity and the way that people that cared about me spoke because when you tell people pat them on the head and treat them like a dog and say oh it's going to be okay you know like a puppy you're going to grow up to be a dog so <clears throat> yeah it's easier to say drink a beer wow well, let's have a great time people love you dude he's cool you know uh, i don't drink i've never done any drugs so it's people don't like me <laughs> Those are some words of wisdom. And now we have fun, one final last question from the Facebook page. How much do you bench? You know what? I haven't done that in a long time. I've had three back surgeries. So um, when, what's your record then? Uh, you know what? It's funny because it's like how big was the fish? I know exactly when I was younger what I used to lift and stuff. And, and it always sounds funny when people say, oh, I used to punch this or that. So I, I don't really talk about it. I, you know, I go to the gym and after I had my, my, my uh, the, well, back surgery, I can back surgery. The guy said, he goes, you know what? You're not, you're not going to be lifting. You're not going to be a, a, a linebacker. It's defensive back, you know? So it's a whole different approach. I had to go through the whole thing where I think when you're younger, you uh, sometimes you, your ego pushes you to a certain degree and uh, went through the situation with the back surgery where the little old lady got off the machine and then I got on and put even less weight, you know? And you go through that and, and it's a it's a humbling experience. And then you sit there and go, what is life about? And it's like, it's great to be able, I went through where I was on, I couldn't pick up my kids, you know, there was, you know, weight restriction and all that stuff. So I, I look at it, um, you know, I just had someone the other day that they came and in a wheelchair they just had an operation and they wanted to come and see and stuff and and talk to me and and you sit there and go you know I'm I'm fucking lucky I can be here um I had a friend that just got hit by a car messed up really bad in the hospital who would have thought it would happen just one of those random things so I, I think as long as uh you can get up and do what you love That's that's the important thing. That's that's the that's a that's a record every day. Thank you very much for your time. No It's been a real pleasure. Uh, any final words to camera? Ah oh, man, do what you got to do. That's that's right. You heard the man. Don't be a bitch and kill <laughs> Captain Stupid. Definitely. Rauta over and out. <laughs>